it's filming and hi there hi there hey everyone uh andrew boyd here um i'm in my uh, tiny little new york city apartment uh with some uh, exciting news a book i worked on very hard uh has just uh come out uh, i want a better catastrophe navigating the climate crisis with grief hope and gallows humor uh, we're going to look at some of that gallows humor and um Take a look at what else comes with this book. A fairly unusual flowchart folds out from it. Um, lots of boxes and lines and decision points. And we're, I printed out a big version of it that we can step through together. It basically allows you to make your own, find your own pathways through the thicket of uh, climate impacts and options and scenarios and decision points. So um, let's begin where it says to begin. Begin. Uh, is climate change for real? I try not to think about it. Is climate change for real? I try not to think about it. Okay, I'll think about it. Nope, it's not for real. <laughs> well, you may be in denial. No, I'm not in denial. It's got to be a Chinese hoax. It must be. Um, I don't like your solution, so it can't be true. Isn't the climate always changing? If it gets too bad, God will intervene. You may be in denial. Hmm. Is climate change for real? Okay, yes. Next question. Are we fucked? I try not to think about it. Um, are we fucked? I try not to think about it. Are we fucked? Okay, well, what do you mean we? And here's where it gets really interesting because there's different we's. People have really different experiences of uh, the climate breakdown. Some folks think, I'm going to escape to a nice farm in Vermont with my friends, while others very validly are saying the apocalypse is already happening to me, and I can't help but think about it. Let's follow the pathway of these folks who think they can get away to Vermont with their friends. Why do they think that? Because the, the hidden assumption is the apocalypse is going to happen to somebody else. Well, who? Well, that would be what we call people who are on the front lines of climate impacts. Uh, Frontline communities experience first and worst the consequences of climate change. We are disproportionately low income of color, indigenous from the global south, and folks who labor in toxic conditions. So that's frontline communities having a very different experience than the folks with enough sort of privilege and uh, access to be able to uh, kind of pop off to Vermont, who, even though they believe the science, you know, are in emotional denial about the widespread consequences and who will be most impacted and and, and how this will play out for everybody. Um, and possibly also not just an emotional denial, but possibly a bit racist. But it is complicated, but possibly a bit racist nonetheless. Shit! So what can I do? Well, one thing you can do is leverage your privilege, you know, to address the problem. Uh, while trying not to virtue signal too, how to, too hard about it, people. Um, okay, so leveraging your privilege. Does that mean, so we're all hoping this is true, so we don't have to look at the structural inequities in the system and how we might be on the benefiting side of it. So we're all in this together? Well, no, not, because there's the front folks on the front lines who are you know asymmetrically impacted and the folks who sort of maybe have caused more of the problem who can escape to Vermont or run, run fossil fuel companies. So we're sort of all in this together because we share the same planet and have to, um, you know, all our living systems are going to be impacted, but we're also, there's extreme injustices and asymmetries built in. So uh, we're sort of uh, all in this together and not all in this together at the same time. Or you could think of it as we're being, we're in the same storm, but different boats. And yes, it is complicated. Look how complicated it is. Look how complicated it is. And this chart tries to track uh, a vast swath of the complexities, different scenarios, decision points, uh, philosophical uh, dilemmas uh, that we all face uh, as we go through this in our own different ways, as we've seen. And um, it's from the book, as I said, I Want a Better Catastrophe, which you can pre-order now at bettercatastrophe.com. And if you want to grab the flowchart, well, you can uh, at that website as well. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, yeah, and uh, we'll have another episode where we go through other parts of the chart at another time. This is Andrew Boyd. Ciao.